uh, okay, now I want to, I just want to give you guys a couple YouTube statistics just to give you a further idea of why all the money is moving to digital. YouTube has over a billion users. Now think about that. That's one in every three people on the internet are on YouTube. That's insane. Um, hundreds of millions of uh, hours are generated every uh, month. Uh, you don't, ha and this is important to mention, you don't have to capture a massive audience to make a living off of YouTube. Because there's so many views going to YouTube and digital now, you can capture a niche market and still make a living. You don't have to be the fifth biggest channel in Canada. You can make a living off of two, three million views a month, which sounds like a lot, but if you capture a niche market, you can get there. It's not as difficult as you might think. There was once a time when it was difficult. Now there's just so many eyes, it's not as hard. Overall, YouTube, and specifically YouTube alone, reaches more 30, or sorry, more 18 to 34 year olds and more 18 to 49 year olds than any cable network in the United States. That's a pretty clear indication of where the eyeballs are moving. The number of hours people spend watching on YouTube is up 60% year over year. 60% every single year. That's insane. The number of people watching YouTube per day is up 40% year over year. Partner revenue, I'm, I would be considered a YouTube partner, is up 50% year over year. That's a lot. The number of channels earning six figures per year is up 50% year over year. Now think about that. There are 50, it's growing by 50% every single year, the number of people making $100,000 or more on YouTube. So just something to think about. Um, now, what's the key to all of this? That's kind of the real question here. Why, how are brands winning at this game? How did I get 5 million subscribers? Why is YouTube even a thing? The key here is authenticity. That's the one word I would use to describe YouTube. It's how YouTube was it was what YouTube was built upon. Back in 2006, when YouTube really just kind of started, um, people were uploading videos of themselves, vlogs, uh, just you know, recording themselves in a crappy non-HD webcam, you know, non, it was just like black bars on the side, you know, grainy. And, but that's, it gained a lot of popularity quickly. It wasn't because the quality was there, there was no production value, the sound was terrible, you didn't know what you were looking at half the time. But it's because it was real. And that's where people's tastes have moved over the years. They still, there's always going to be a place for the highly polished house of cards stuff, but people's tastes are moving to the more real stuff. They want to see, see Joe Schmo talk about his day. They want to see, you know, John Smith talk about how he just went through a divorce. Like, they, it's real stuff and people connect to this. And that's what advertising is all about. It's about connecting in, in the business world in general, it's about connecting with the person on the other end. It's not about just trying to hit as many eyeballs as possible. It's essentially the game has gone from uh, width to depth. So it's no longer about how many eyeballs can I hit width-wise. It's about creating a connection. It's about depth. So you're better off, instead of you know, putting an ad on Twitter and reaching 100,000 eyes, you're better off tweeting individual customers. Tweeting 10 customers is going to create potentially 10 customers for life because the brand has reached directly out to them and they think, wow, Skittles likes me a lot. They want me to taste that rainbow. So I don't, I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know why I'm using Skittles as an example. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's popular because it's real and it's compelling. Um, the, the, co consumers are starting to really demand authenticity, like I said. And um, <laughs> Skittles again. Skittles and Taco Bell are great examples of Twitter accounts. How many people follow their Twitter accounts? Is there anybody here? Okay, I highly recommend you check them out because they're really funny. Um, they add value to their followers' timelines. It, it, they don't sit there and go, hey, buy Skittles, buy Skittles, buy Taco Bell, buy Taco Bell. All they do all the time is give you jokes. And they're funny, they're genuinely funny. They must have hired a comedic writer or something because they're good. But that's an idea, what they do is they offer you value and it's, it's real people not trying to sell you stuff. Essentially what they're doing is they're jab, 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 and then they right hook. Who gets that reference? Oh, come on, at least one person has to get that reference. Dad, come on, you're the only one? My God. Okay, I'm about to change your lives. Look up Gary Vaynerchuk. If you don't know who that is, Gary Vaynerchuk is somebody that changed my life in the way that I 
uh, approach social media and my business in general. He is he's sort of um, a guru for social media and he predicts things five years well in advance before they happen. Essentially what that concept means is give, 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 however many times and then ask. You don't ask on the first attempt and that's what these Twitter accounts are doing. And that's what I do every single day. I go on Twitter and I offer something introspective or something funny or a goofy selfie or me at you know, Awesome Niagara College talking about this lecture, which I'm going to be taking a picture with you guys at the end, so get ready. Uh, get your duck faces ready. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's, that's an example of offering value. And then at the end of the week, when I release a video, I say, hey guys, I would love it if you would check out this video or retweet it. So people think, yeah, okay, he's not always trying to push videos, push videos on me. He offers me value and then he asks something. And that's the best way that you can approach business. Don't always try to close on the first time. Offer value to, to customers or any whoever you're trying to target. Um, okay, now authenticity also means mistakes are going to happen because you're being real. Real people make real mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes, but there have been some pretty tremendous fails on the part of brands trying to be hip, trying to be cool over the last couple years, and they just burned, like it was terrible. A good example, and there's multiple examples, but one that I found online was DiGiorno, DiGiorno Pizza. Um, they tweeted out the hashtag, why I stayed. Now that hashtag was supposed to be used to raise the awareness of domestic violence by people tweeting their experiences of why they stayed with their abuser. Well, they tweeted out, hashtag why I stayed with, followed by, because you had pizza. Yeah, exactly, very bad taste, and no pun intended. It's a very, very poor choice, because they were trying to be hip and be like, hey, you know, maybe we'll be light with it, but it was just a horror, they crashed and burned and they got crucified for it. But that kind of stuff is going to happen because it's a real person. And you know, believe it or not, the best thing you can do if something like that happens is just apologize. You know what, guys? We screwed up. We're, we're a real brand. There's a real person behind that Twitter account. We're not polished. We screwed up. Won't happen again. Really sorry. And you know what? You would be shocked. People are so forgiving. They're not, your brand is not going to end. A lot of brands don't enter the authenticity realm because it's terrifying. Because legal hasn't approved every tweet. Because it's not polished and you're not trying to sell something. It, it, companies are afraid of being real. But you can't do that if you want to succeed in today's world. You have to take risk. And there is risk associated with that. But like I said, just apologize. You screw up, say sorry, and oftentimes people will like you more because it shows just how authentic you are. It shows that Sony said something bad, yeah, then they apologized, yeah, okay, cool, I kind of respect the fact that they owned up to it. Um, so that, that's the kind of thing that is really important in today's world. Whether, you know, whether you're a brand or whether you're a regular person uh, you know, trying to get a job, a job interview, or you're working for a company, authenticity is everything. Uh, don't be afraid to embrace it. That would be like the number one thing uh, that I want you guys to take away from this. If you're ever working for a company in business or anything, um, do that. And whether it means just be, being yourself or making the company you work for more human, uh, it, authenticity is going to benefit everybody in, in the end as well as you know, your bottom line or your company 